Can you see the screen? Yes, doctor. I can see the screen. Okay. So, uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed the uh, operation of uh, three-phase uh, controlled uh, bridge rectifier. Okay. And uh, what we have seen that the uh, uh, one thyristor from the upper group and one thyristor from the lower group always turn on, you know, keep on. And the whole period is divided into six sub-intervals. Each sub-interval is of 60 degrees. And in each 60 degrees, there is one pair of thyristor that conduct, you know, one from the upper group and one from the lower group. You know. And as such, the uh, voltage that is coming across the load, that is always uh, line voltage. That is always line voltage that we can see from the circuit that is coming as line voltage. In it. So, uh, and then we have to mark the reference point, alpha is equal to zero point for upper group and for the lower group. In it. So from the upper group, in it, when the uh, voltage is most positive, it will turn on. In the lower group, when it is most negative, it will turn on. We see that this is the reference point for uh, thyristor 1, thyristor 3, and thyristor 5. This is for 2, 4, and 6. So we see that the sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. So uh, we number the uh, thyristor according to this. And then uh, according to the alpha, we mark the uh, conduction region for uh, all the six thyristors, or we can say that uh, two, uh, the pair of thyristors. And then uh, accordingly, we see which uh, line voltage is coming across the load and we plot that line voltage, okay? So this we have seen for uh, uh, 30 degree, uh, zero degree, 30 degree, 60 degree, uh, 90 degree and so on, 120 degree. So now, uh, uh, this is an example uh, for the uh, bridge rectifier. Uh, it says that uh, three-phase control rectifier has an input voltage of 480 volt. Uh, the load is modeled as a series RL. Uh, determine the delay angle required to produce an average current of 50 ampere in the load. So for the average 50 ampere current, the average voltage or the DC voltage will be 500 volt. So from here, we can find the value of alpha. Uh, the alpha comes out as 39.5. And corresponding to this 39.5, we can find what is the uh, normalized uh, harmonic voltage for 6th uh, harmonic voltage, 12th uh, harmonic voltage, we can even find 18th harmonic voltage. And then uh, from there, we calculate the uh, harmonic voltages and the impedance is also calculated. Uh, they are higher frequency uh, impedances and we can calculate the different current that was the part B of the problem. Now, Next uh, is uh, called uh, dual converter or 12 pulse converter. So 12 pulse converter, uh, we have seen that in if we, when we are using uh, one, uh, when we are using only uh, one uh, bridge rectifier, uh, we are able to get the output voltage of six pulse. We get output voltage of six pulse. Now, if we uh, use two modules, if we use two modules, two three phase modules, and we connect them in series like this or uh, in series, uh, then what we get, uh, we get the uh, output voltage across the load that will be uh, of 12 pulse. We will see that it will be of 12 pulse. Okay? So six pulse is coming out from here and six pulse is coming out from here. When they you are, when you add them together, what we get here is 12 pulse, okay? Now, why is this? Uh, 12 pulse uh, converter is important because this is used for high power uh, applications. We get uh, uh, high voltage here because this is the sum of the two voltages. And there, of course, the, uh, this uh, is the output of uh, output of uh, module one, this output of module two. And we will see that they are 30 degree phase shifted from one another. This is at zero degree, this will be at 30 degree. And when we add these two, what we get is 12 pulse. Okay? So the number of pulses is uh, double that of the one module. So when uh, it is uh, double, then what we uh, is the advantage that the 
uh, ripple uh, uh, voltage and ripple current uh, of the uh, output will be at uh, higher harmonics array. They will contain higher harmonics. We see that in case of uh, uh, six pulse, uh, the harmonics contents are uh, sixth harmonic, twelfth harmonic, and eighteenth uh, harmonic, like this. When it was uh, single phase, when it was single phase, uh, then the harmonic was uh, second harmonic, uh, fourth harmonic, uh, sixth harmonic. They are the multiple of two. But in case of three phase, it is multiple of six, six, twelve. 18 like this now if we use uh, two of them together then the uh, this voltage will be high as well as we will have uh, 12 pulse in one cycle so if we have 12 pulse in one cycle the harmonic of the output voltage and output current will be uh, 12 multiple of 12 so it will be like you know 12 uh, 24 uh, 36 like this any so higher the uh, harmonic uh, uh, number the uh, design of filter is easier in any system okay so the output voltage harmonics can be reduced by using dual converter so we have we reduce the output harmonics by increasing the order of harmonics okay further the average output voltage also increases because it is not the sum of these two voltages so it increases the source current harmonics also improve. We will see that the current that the uh, converter will draw from the uh, grid, this will also be improved. Uh, the, in case of uh, six uh, pulse, in case of six pulse, the uh, current in the uh, source side, I don't know if we have, uh, we have not shown the harmonic of the source side, uh, but for the source side, on this side, the harmonics that is introduced in this is uh, third harmonic, uh, not third harmonic, uh, fifth harmonic, uh, seventh harmonics, uh, then uh, eleventh harmonics, and so on. Uh, there will be no third harmonic or multiple of third harmonic here because it is a three phase system. So, if in a three phase system, we do not have a third uh, multiple of uh, three means three, six, nine, these harmonics will not be here, but uh, uh, we will have. Uh, uh, fifth is the minimum harmonic, then seventh is the minimum uh, after that. So fifth, uh, seventh, then eleventh, then thirteenth. These are the harmonics that will be in the current, this source current, okay? Now, uh, we will see that if we use uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the dual converter, then the harmonic uh, of the source current will be uh, lower than that. It will be much lower uh, lower than that or mean we, we, we can say that the harmonic uh, will be uh, improved uh, because the harmonic content uh, before it was uh, minimum was fifth but now we will see the minimum will be uh, i think it is 11th uh, the minimum will be uh, yeah minimum is 11th uh, so the source current will also be improved uh, and you know this is very important to improve the source current because uh, the, there are other loads that are connected to the same uh, network and the rectifier is big and it is causing the distortion in the current. That distorted current will impact the other load which are connected to the same grid system. So that is why it is our duty to uh, improve this current. And to improve this current, this, this dual converter will improve the current by uh, uh, increasing the harmonic number of the uh, source current and that will be 11th harmonic that will be uh, dominant uh, in the in this case okay now what happens here that we use uh, uh, two uh, uh, two converters uh, such that the uh, output of this converter and output of this converter they are 30 degree uh, from one another so this is how we do that we use a uh, uh, one you see a three phase transformer which is a star star Another three phase transformer that we use as a star delta. So, this is star star that we use is to uh, feed the uh, thyristor uh, rectifier one, and the star delta we use to uh, feed the uh, another uh, module, another three phase uh, rectifier. So, one is the star star, another is the star delta. And as you know, 
that if you have uh, uh, this is your uh, you know uh, uh, this is your uh, delta this is your v delta this is v delta then v star v star always leads 30 degree the delta okay so since the uh, uh, star leads uh, 30 degree so this will be like you no know, leading by 30 degree and this is lagging by 30 degree from one if you take this at 0 degree then uh, this at 0 degree then this will be at minus 30 degree this will be at minus 30 degree now when you add the two voltages one at 0 degree another at uh, 30 degree then we will see that uh, we will be able to create uh, 12 pulse uh, from here okay now moreover uh, you see uh, here in this is star star so this voltage uh, line voltage and this voltage is a star delta so in the delta as you know the uh, output voltage line and phase is the same so uh, we have to if suppose this is uh, uh, for example uh, 400 volt 440 volt in the secondary then here it will be since it is uh, delta it will be less so what we do that because it is only you see this is the line voltage here what we get is only phase voltage here we get is 440 by root 3 only so what we do that we increase the number of turns of the secondary by root 3 times we increase the uh, secondary uh, turn by root 3 times so that we get equal voltage here and equal voltage here same voltage here we get 440 here also we get 440 here so we have to adjust the uh, turn ratio of the star delta transformer so that we get the same voltage understand now you see this can be like two separate uh, three phase uh, transformers or you can have like this you can have like you know uh, uh, one transformer they are actually uh, you can have like you know one transformer uh, where you have this as uh, a star and the other one you have two windings one uh, with a star and one with delta okay so it is multi winding transformer you can have only one primary and two secondary secondary one and secondary two and if this is of with number of turns one this is number of turns n2 then this should be the number of turns root 3 n2 so that the voltage which is coming here is the same as the voltage which is coming here same voltage we get okay so this is uh, uh, how the uh, turn ratio is uh, adjusted in anyway. now this can be only one star and two delta this could be this is one possibility the other possibility is this that you have two separate uh, three phase transformers uh, but one is star star and that is star delta and you connect the two in the uh, series fashion like this okay so one bridge is supplied by a star delta transformer another bridge is supplied by a star star transformer the purpose is to create a phase shift of 30 degree between the two inputs of the bridge delta output will be lagging by 30 degree to get the same voltage from the two secondary the turn ratio of the star delta transformer should be n is to root 3 n2 the firing pulses are applied in the delta connected after 30 degree of the star connected module this is also important because you see uh, this voltage is lagging by 30 degree this is leading by 30 degree you can say so uh, if you apply at alpha here then here you have to apply after 30 degree okay alpha minus 30 degree you have to apply alpha minus 30 degree because this is lagging this is lagging this is lagging so you apply the uh, uh, gate pulses after 30 degree of module 1 now if we look into the uh, uh, output uh, voltages and how they uh, look like uh, so you see Uh, the module one, uh, this is uh, module one. Uh, this will produce six pulse. This will produce six pulse. But then you have to add them, okay? And they are thirty uh, degree uh, phase shifted. They are thirty degree phase shifted. They are thirty degree phase shifted. And when you add these two, what we see that we will get the twelve pulse. So you see, uh, this is uh, my uh, uh, output of my rectifier one. This is output of rectifier one. Uh, which is the uh, uh, the line voltage which is the line voltage and having uh, six pulses you see this is my cycle 1 and this is cycle 2 so 
you have like one, two, three, four, five, and half here and half here. So it is six. Six pulses are here. Now this is a star output. Now from the delta output, you get the same thing, but 30 degree lagging, 30 degree lagging. So what we get here is 30 degree lagging. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, six pulses, but 30 degree lagging. 30 degree lagging, okay? So, and this is my, uh, you know, uh, secondary uh, voltage of uh, star and delta. What you see that since the delta is root three times N2, this is at N2, so they have same voltage. In it. And this is my star output, this is my uh, delta output uh, of the two uh, rectifier. Now, when you add these two, you see, this is, now I, what I did that, I plotted this one and this one in the one graph, in one graph, okay? So now when I plot them in one graph, uh, this is my uh, delta, this is my delta. And this is actually, I, I, I put it wrong because uh, this is delta, this blue, this, uh, you know, uh, orange is delta and blue is uh, star, blue is star. Now, when you, this is the output and this is another output. Now, when you add them together, when you add them together, what happens? The sum of these two, when you add them together, you will get this. You will get this. This is the sum of the two, okay? When you add this, you get sum of the two like this. So now you will count that it is 12 pulse. It is 12 pulse. So this 12 pulse is happening because of the addition of the uh, to 30 degree phase shifted waveform, 30 degree phase shifted waveform. Now, what is the, uh, you know, the uh, output uh, peak of this and what is the uh, minimum peak of this? You can calculate that. You can calculate the, the peak value of this. I show you here, yeah. I show you here. This is my uh, star. This is my star output. And this is my delta output. Okay. Line voltages, both are same, but uh, delta is 30 degree lagging. And what I am doing that I am adding them. So when I add to get the output voltage, you see, this is one is a star, another is delta, and I am adding them. So this is my uh, resultant. Now, when you add this, what you see is uh, y square delta I square two star y delta into cos 30 degree and when you uh, do this uh, uh, graphically what you see that it is 1.932 uh, vm line to line this is what you get as the peak value of the this is the peak value no no this is yeah this is the peak value yeah this is the peak value yes uh, output peak no. Check. This is output peak. Uh, the, or the peak output of 12 pulse converter occurs midway between the alternate peaks of the six pulse converter, adding the voltage that you know. I think this is this I put wrong. This should not be here. Any. But uh, it is, uh, yeah, it should be, yes, this should be 0.9. No, no, sorry, it's not this one. It should be this. This value should be 1.932. Okay, this should be, well, sorry, no, this I will, I will correct it any, because this is, this is the peak value, this is the peak value, only root 3, okay, this is root 3, but uh, when you add these two, what we get is 1.93 as my peak value, 1.93, and you see here, you can also, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can uh, find from here also, that uh, you see at this point, the two meets. Okay, now when you add these two, when you add these two, what happens? This is maximum, this is uh, minimum, okay? And now it is decreasing, decreasing, this is increasing, increasing. And this is the point where the two meet. So this is the point where you will get the peak value of the addition, the peak value of the addition. When you add, you will get the peak value. So this peak value actually will occur at this point, it will occur at this point. This point is what? This point is, 15 degree. This is total 30 degree from here to here and halfway midway is 15 degree. It's 15 degree. So 
you can calculate the output peak as 2 vm cos 15 degree which is 1.932 line to line so this is what you get here this is 1.932 vm line to line this is what you get at the output okay uh, this is also shown by the graphical method in the graphical method i have shown you that this is star this is delta and this is 30 degree so when you do it will be 1.932 into v peak line to line v peak line to line or you can write root 2 v l l to l then in that case this is rms value in that case this will be rms value okay now this is the uh, peak now what is the minimum that you will get the minimum this point the minimum the minimum you get is by having you see star minimum delta minimum and then you do the same thing and what is star minimum star minimum is this is star minimum this is nothing but 0 0.866 vm l to l so this is you put here uh, 0.866 vm line to line then what you get is 1.866 so the peak value is 1.932 the peak value is 1.932 and minimum is 1.866 it is not here it should go here okay it should go here this is the peak value and this is the minimum peak okay so maximum peak and minimum peak I mean. so this is what you get I mean. and when you see the uh, output average voltage so this is the average voltage this is the average voltage this average voltage of the star average voltage of the delta so average voltage of a star is this and average voltage of delta is this and when you add them what you get six times vm line to line cos alpha that's the uh, average of the two okay and now when you analyze the uh, and you see the output voltage waveform contain harmonics of the order 12k it will be uh, since it is 12 pulse so it will be 12 or 24 36 like this you will have the harmonic here. and the current source current of the star star side is this star star side minus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 7 minus 1 by 11 plus 1 by 13 so fifth harmonic seventh harmonic 11th harmonic 13th harmonic this is what you see in star and this is what you see in delta they are also the same fifth harmonic seventh harmonics but they have opposite sign this is minus this is plus this is plus this is minus okay and this is minus and this is minus so when you add the two current the star and delta current what happens this and this will cancel out Fifth, seventh and seventh will cancel out now what remained is your 11th harmonics and then 13th harmonics and so on so you get this double current but it will be of higher order harmonics that it will contain so the combined for 12 pulse converter you will have 11th harmonics and 13th harmonics okay so this is all about the dual converter but in general the number of pulses are how many pulses we are getting when you when we have two modules six and six pulse when we are adding what we are getting is 12 pulse now how to get 18 pulse how to get 18 pulse if we have six six and six and you add them we will get 18 pulse okay but what should be the phase shift between the two between the three modules okay now similarly if you want to get 24 pulse we need six different modules what will be the phase shift between them okay so in practice up to 48 pulse are used the major problem is the increase in the cost and volume of high power transformer this is the major problem because you need many transformers to be used I mean, that's the problem but as you increase the number of pulses the quality of current will be better both in the output and input and moreover the output uh, will have high and high voltage okay higher and higher voltage now this is a general formula that if you have a phase shift of 36 by p where p is the number of pulse the number of modules required is p by 6 and the harmonics of the source is pk plus minus 1 now putting this for the 12 pulse you see the phase shift that is required between the two modules the phase shift that is required between two modules 
is 360 by P. So 30 degree phase shift is required. And how many modules are required? Two modules are required. One module is at zero degree, another is 30 degree. This is how you do. Now, if you have 18 pulse, then for 18 pulse, you need 20 degree phase shift. And there are three modules. So there are three modules and you need a phase shift among them of 20 degree, among them of 20 degree. So what we do, how we achieve that? Six pulse, six pulse, six pulse. How we do that, we operate this at zero degree, we operate this at plus 20 degree, and we operate this at minus 20 degree. If we do like this, then we can take 18 pulse at the output. 18 pulse output. Similarly, for 24 pulse, we need four module. With the angle between them, 15 degree among each. So what we do that, we operate this at say minus 22.5, minus 7.5, plus 7.5, and plus 22.5 so that the phase shift between them between these two is 15 degree between these two is 15 degree between these two is 15 degree so with this you can find out for all the other 36 pulse 48 pulse so how many modules do you need what should be the phase shift between the each modules that you can find out from this general formula and what should be the harmonics of the source current you get from here if you have a, a 12 pulse so it is 12k plus minus 1 which is equal to 11 13 and so on okay if you have 24 pulse then it will be 24k k plus minus 1 which gives you 23 25 and so on so the most dominant will be 23 okay so the harmonic number has increased a lot. Do you understand this concept or not? Any question here? Any question? Are you with me? Do you... No question. Uh... Okay. Make correction here, okay? This peak is 1.932. Now, control rectifier operating as an inverter. So when you when we when the uh, rectifier operate as an inverter, when alpha is greater than 90 degree, for alpha greater than 90 degree, it operate as inverter, and we call it line commutated converter. We call it line commutated converter. Okay. So this is what is shown for one particular uh, alpha. You get all the voltage negative negative voltage you get negative voltage okay so your current is in the same direction but your voltage become negative so the power is fed from dc to ac and this is called inversion operation or inverter operation so this is the uh, an example it says that uh, the six pulse uh, six pulse converter has a delay angle of 120 degree so 120 degree means it is operating as a line commutated converter or it's called inverter the three phase AC system is this much volt. The DC source is this, R is this, L is this. Now determine the power transfer to the AC source from the DC. So what you have to find out is the power transfer from AC to DC. That means P AC, we have to find out minus I naught into V naught. Okay. So what is V naught is the average voltage. It is given us by this formula. So you can find the average voltage. Then you find the average current and then you find the power okay and power supplied by the dc source is plus the power obtained is like negative 
and the power of drop by the resistance is i square into rms and uh, we, we the rms value uh, if we approximately assume as the average value we can get the power absorbed in the resistance now the impact of the source in inductance source inductance effect so you see uh, when you connect any uh, rectifier then you connect through a transformer yes there is a transformer here there is a transformer here so when you have a transformer and then you connect to the rectifier you connect to the rectifier by transformer the transformer has its leakage reactance it has leakage reactance it has leakage reactance so you cannot avoid these reactances because this reactance is coming from the uh, source side from the transformer side okay so what is the impact of this source inductance that we have seen in uh, single pulse uh, half wave uh, and uh, two pulse full wave what we have seen that due to this inductance the current that uh, falls is not instantaneous the current that rises is not instantaneous like the current takes some time to build up because of the inductance in the source and similarly with the falling current the current will fall with some fall time to zero so this is due to the inductance due to the inductance because it does not allow sharp rise and fall of the current but ideally what we have uh, analyzed until now that the current drops suddenly from high value to zero value or the current rise from zero value to high value with, in without time but here because of the source inductance you will see that the current will fall slowly will rise slowly okay now there is a situation that is considered that suppose this d5 is conducting d5 is conducting and i have to transfer the current from d5 to d1 i have to transfer the current from d5 to d1 so what will happen that the current that will go to that will flow from d1 will rise slowly and the current that was flowing from d5 will fall slowly will fall slowly so at one point of time when it is rising and when this is falling that means both d1 and d5 are, are operating at one time so both are operating d1 and d5 are on simultaneously they are both operating simultaneously while uh, in all our, our analysis what we told you that only one from the upper and one from the lower will operate okay but this is we, when we do not consider the impact of the source inductance when we consider the impact of source inductance we will see that there will be three diodes that or thyristor that will be operating three diodes or three thyristor will be operating at one time remember this point operating at one time three will be operating at one time okay so here i am considering that d5 current is flowing from d5 and now it is will flow to d1 so we are transferring current from d5 to d1 but at the same time both will be operating so what will be the equivalent circuit equivalent circuit is like this this is my source voltage va this is the inductance source inductance la say this is equal to ls and this is my diode d1 and this is lc also called ls equal to ls and this is my diode d5 so current is falling ic current is falling the current through the diode is falling while the current through the diode d1 is rising okay and it is say it is coming back from d6 so the current is flowing back from d6 but remember this current is constant current this is constant current dc current this is dc current okay this is dc current but this current is rising and this current is falling why it is rising and falling because of these inductances 
because of these inductances they are rising and falling okay so that's the uh, issue okay so this is the uh, equivalent circuit uh, now in this equivalent circuit what you have to understand that ia is rising current this is falling current this is constant current because this is equal to load current this is constant current if this is a constant current then dib by dt will be equal to zero this current will be zero okay the uh, the that voltage drop in this will be zero because this current is constant dib is nothing but di not by dt and this is equal to zero okay but there will be some voltage drop here and there will be some voltage drop here okay now if we apply kvl in this loop what we get apply kvl apply kvl in the loop so where if we apply kvl in this loop i will apply kvl in this loop so this is you see minus va plus LDA, ls di by dt there is no voltage drop here then we come here and then this is plus voltage drop in this then plus vc so i apply kvl in this loop then i can write va plus ls di by dt minus ls di by dt minus vc is equal to zero and from here we can write uh, va this is va this is vc so you can write va vc together and this is minus lsdi by dt plus lsdi by dt but you see here uh, when you apply kcl then ia plus ic is equal to i not this is ia this is ic when you apply kcl here it is i not so ia plus ic is equal to i not now when you differentiate this di by dt d plus dic by dt is equal to di not by dt but this is dc so it is zero so you can say that dia by dt is equal to minus of dc by dt and now you put this here this is minus okay so now va minus vc is nothing but vac and this is both together is here so it is 2 ls dis by dt now you can write this as vac into dt is equal to 2 ls dis now you put instead of t you have multiply by omega when you multiply omega multiply both sides now to get vc you integrate when you integrate so the uh, current is from zero to the full value while the uh, voltage is from zero to uh, mu uh, because the mu is the overlap time is the overlap time you see here this is the graph uh, if you can see ic is flowing this is the current through diode 5 this is the current through diode D1. This is zero for now. And this is maximum equal to the load current. And now at this point of time, it is start falling. D5 is going for commutation. And D1 is rising. The current through D1 is rising. That this time where it is falling and rising, this time is called overlap time. And this is given by mu. This is given by mu. So if we... You, we, we, we have seen this before that when IC was there and uh, this is zero, the voltage was VAB and here it was VCB. This we have seen in three phase bridge rectifier. Okay. So this was the original line voltage VAB. This is the original line voltage VAB. But we will see that due to the overlapping problem, this voltage will not be following VAB, but it will be average of vab and vcb we will see that it will be the average of va plus uh, vab and vcb that will be the voltage that will be in the output at this time this we will see now when you integrate this what you get is this uh, as the uh, uh, expression for the uh, overlap time okay now what is the difference in the DC voltage due to this overlap? 
so to to get that we find the voltage at point p then we find the voltage at point q so what is the voltage at point p at this point what is the voltage so we apply kvl from here because these two they are in parallel so they are having the same voltage so just consider one of this so this is minus va plus this ldf by dt that will come across that will be the potential of v so v is the, like this vp is va minus lsdi by dt and which is equal to va and what is this lsdis by dt that you have seen from here lsdi by dt is equal to vac by 2 so i write in place of this as vac by 2 and what is vac vac is va minus vc so from here we get va plus vc divided by 2 that is vp voltage at the point p now what is the voltage at point q voltage at point q is the voltage drop in the source inductance in phase c is zero the as the current is dc so what is here voltage the voltage of this point voltage of this point is same as this voltage yeah this voltage is same because here the drop is zero so whatever where is vb is the same is your vq so your vq is vb so that dc link voltage is vpq which is equal to vp minus vq and v, vp is this vq is this so when you get this it is vab plus vcb by 2 the average of vab and vcb that is the voltage that is coming across the load that is called the dc link voltage okay so what is the difference so without overlap it was vab but with overlap it is this vab plus vcb by 2 so what is the drop how much is the drop drop is vac by 2 that is the amount the voltage is dropped vab minus of this voltage drop so you get vac by 2 okay so the average reduction in the dc link voltage will be how much this is the total this is the instantaneous value vac by 2 so you get the average by 1 by t 0 to mu that's the overlap period and this is the voltage instantaneous voltage integrate this you get this much so this is the average output voltage that will be there this is the voltage without overlap this is the voltage with overlap so the difference is your this is the voltage that you will get the output that is the voltage you get so this is the voltage that will be dropped okay and voltage drop is what how much voltage drop is this vab plus vcb by 2 so this is what you have seen here that this is your So this is the average, okay? How you are getting this average? You are getting this average from here. You see, this is my VAB, this is my VAB, and this is my, you see, if you extend this here, this is my VCB, and this is my VAB, and when you take the average of these two, it will be what? Something in between, like this. So this is, VAB plus VCB by 2. So, I will not get this full voltage, but I will get this voltage. So, what I will get every time, it will be like this, you see. This will be my voltage, then it will go again up. It will come like this. This drop is because of the source voltage, uh, source inductance, because of the source inductance. So, source inductance is causing a decrease in the average output voltage. Decrease the average output voltage. Okay. And next is about the dual converter, back to back converter. They call back to back converter four quadrant operation. If you if you have uh, one uh, uh, three phase bridge rectifier, this is another three phase bridge rectifier, but they are connected in inverse fashion. They are connected in inverse fashion. This is like this, and this is connected in the inverse fashion. Okay, this is minus plus, and this is minus plus. They are connected in inverse fashion. This is called four quadrant converter. This is called four quadrant because it will be able to operate in all the four quadrants 
that means positive voltage as well as negative voltage positive current as well as negative current so you see the current will when this is operating it will current will flow like this and when this will be operating the current will flow like this okay that means current will flow in both direction and of course this can give you the negative voltage depending upon the value of alpha okay so you can get positive voltage you can get negative voltage now each time every time when you operate the two converters they should be having equal voltage this the average voltage should be equal v01 and v02 should be equal all the time but instantaneously you will see that they will not be same they will not be equal so there will be some circulating current that will flow in this and to limit the circulating current you provide the inductance or the reactance those reactance is provided to limit the circulating current because you see if you have any two say this is your source this is other source if there is a difference in the voltage say this is 100 volt and say this is 105 volt so what will happen current will flow in this direction suppose if this is 105 volt and this is 100 volt so current will flow in this direction so because of the difference in the uh, in voltages of the two uh, converters there will be some circulating current this is called circulating current so the circulating current flows because of the instantaneous voltage difference between v01 and v02 however the average of the two will remain the same okay now where this kind of converter is used where we use this kind of converter we use this kind of converter uh, when we uh, have regenerative braking in the drive system regenerative braking when we have regenerative braking when we have regenerative braking in the system so what is with the meaning of regenerative that means the suppose we have a motor here suppose we have a dc motor here now when we break this motor when we break this motor it will generate some amount of energy it will act as a generator and it will feed current okay it will feed current but we can get the regeneration by turning on this harvester module and the current will flow like this and it will go to the grid here it will go to the grid here okay so in the regenerative braking we use this kind of converter so this is what is explained so what happens that the operation is done in such a way that alpha plus alpha 2 should be equal to 180 degree always this condition is met alpha plus alpha 2 is equal to 180 degree this operate at alpha 1 this operate at alpha 2 so now suppose if this is operating at 60 degree this should operate at 120 degree so this is working as rectifier this is working as inverter okay so this is the uh, voltage waveform for module 1 and this is the for module 2 you can uh, draw this voltage uh, from this graph which I have shown you here yes you draw this 120 degree alpha that will be the voltage this voltage and 60 degree is this voltage 60 degree is this voltage okay this is 60 degree and similarly you draw for 120 degree but then you inverse it reverse it take negative of this because the second module is connected in anti-parallel it's it's in the opposite direction the voltage they, it is connected in opposite direction it is connected in this fashion if this is plus this is minus okay so this is connected inverse so first you draw 120 degree uh, waveform and then you reverse it if you reverse it you will see that it will be like this So this is the voltage of second converter and this is the voltage of the first converter okay now when you add these two when you add these two what you see that at this point and see v not one the average voltage of one should be equal to the average voltage of the second so when i put the average voltage 3 vm by pi cos alpha one and this should be negative of this cos alpha 2 
because I connected in the opposite direction. So cos alpha 1 plus cos alpha 2 should be 0. That gives you the solution alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 180 degree. So converter, if converter wheel is operating at 60, another converter should operate at 120 degree. This is always important. Now, you consider that V01 is minus of V02. The following waveform is drawn. This is, we have drawn like this. And now, when you uh, add these two uh, voltage, uh, V01 plus V02, uh, you get this waveform. This is the addition of the two. So this is the voltage that comes across the reactor. This comes across the reactor. Because across the reactor, if you apply the KVL, if you apply KVL, this is minus of V01 plus of VR minus of V02 is equal to 0. So VR is equal to V01 plus V02. This is VR. That is voltage across the reactor. Why this reactor is used? This is to limit the circulating current. This is to limit cir circulating current. And circulating current, why the circulating current is flowing? You see here. You see the average of this and the average of this are same. Average is the same because they are having same area. But are they equal every time in each time? No. At this point of time, say, for example, this is the value of VAB or this is the value of V01 and the voltage of V02 is this. So they are different. So each instant, you will see that they are different. So instantaneously, they are not equal. On average, they are equal. On average, they are equal, but instantaneously, they are not equal. On average, they are equal. Instantaneously, they are not equal. So if they are not equal instantaneously, that means there will be some circulating current here. Okay. And this is the voltage across the reactor. Okay. I have drawn it again. This is my uh, VA, VB, VC. Then VAB is this, VBC is this, VCA is this. And the reactor voltage is V01 plus V02, which is equal to VAB minus VBC. And this is my, actually, at 120 degree, when you will draw, this is the voltage that you will see at 120 degree. This is 120 degree voltage that you will see from the waveform, but you have to inverse it because it is negative voltage that is because it is connected in the other way. So when you inverse it, it will be like this. So this is the voltage V02. This is the voltage V02. Okay. And when you add these two, you get this as the and this is the voltage across the reactor. And this is the current through the reactor. Just divided by omega L. That gives you the current through the reactor. And this is the, this will be the formula through the. So this is the current for the circulating current. This is the equation for the circulating current. So the circulating current depends upon. It, it depends upon alpha. It depends upon LR. Depends upon the angle. And depends upon the inductance. The current become maximum when omega t is equal to 2 by, by 3 at alpha is equal to 1. Even without any external load, the, the converter would be continuously running due to the circulating current as a result of ripple voltage across the inductor. This allows the smooth reversal of the load current during the changeover from one quadrant operation to the another operation. And it provides fast dynamic responses, especially to electrical motor drive system. So this kind of converter is only used when you want a regenerative braking, when you want a smooth regenerative braking, you use the second converter in addition to this so that the current can flow in the other direction. Now, the last thing of this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, chapter is about the voltage notching at the point of coupling, you know, point of common coupling. PCC is point of common coupling. So, Suppose if you have a big rectifier connected here, you see this is your transformer. This is your transformer. And this is your point where all the loads are connected. 
rectifier is connected other loads are connected some other loads are connected you see so the loads are connected like this so this is the point where all the loads are connected to the transformer so that is called the point of point of common coupling that's called the point of common coupling that's it called the point of common coupling we see that if you have big rectifier here for example suppose you have uh, 500 kilowatt rectifier here it will draw some huge current from here from the source and as we have seen that the current has some harmonics harmonics if it is uh, six pulse converter then fifth harmonic seventh harmonic so when you draw the current harmonic current in the rectifier what will happen to these currents which is going to the other load they will also be distorted yes because the current which is coming here some of the current is going to this load and some of the current is going to the other load now this load is drawing harmonic current so this current will also be distorted because you see i is equal to i1 plus i2 and so on so if one current is distorted all the current will be distorted so this is the problem that will you will see that if you have big load uh, non linear load such as rectifier is connected at the uh, point of common coupling you will see that there will be problem problem in the distortion in the current uh, drawn by the other load also there will be problem in the voltage and that voltage you want to see what is the problem in the voltage so you see what happens rectifier draws distorted current that results in distortion in the utility voltage waveform also so voltage at the point of common coupling is vs minus lsd is by dt yes you have inductor here so what is the voltage this is va source voltage and here you have a voltage drop in the source inductance so the voltage at the point of common coupling will be what voltage at this point at voltage at pcc is vs the source voltage minus ls ds is by dt source voltage minus the voltage drop in the source inductance okay so this is your voltage normal voltage sine wave and suppose from here to here your rectifier is turned on and it is the diode current or the thyristor current is increasing so when thyristor current is increasing you know that will be a voltage drop here and this voltage drop will be subtracted from the sine wave so your voltage will see this kind of notch so this was your original voltage but now you will see there will be a small notch because of this small voltage drop that will take place due to current rise of the rectifier similarly when the current drops slowly there will be voltage at the point of common coupling will be minus vs plus dis by dt so you will see that there will be another notch here so you will see your voltage will be like this Like this. So this kind of voltage you will see because of the source inductance, and that is coming from the transformer. Okay, that's it. If you have any question.